Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well. Today's video is about Bitcoin. It's a weekly Bitcoin video. Yes, I know sometimes we want to talk about alts, but we have to recognize the importance of Bitcoin and why I think everyone should have a little bit of Bitcoin in their portfolios. Trust me. In years time, you're going to wish you had a, even just a little bit, and it's going to be unaffordable for a lot of people. I'm also going to talk about some alts and look at some meme charts and talk about why Doge has increased over 30% in the past seven days, which is pretty crazy. It's not even really meme season yet or altcoin season. So let's talk about these things here. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more of my content, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to be notified when I come out with new content. So uh, let's take a look and see what we got. So looking at fear and greed today, we're at 72. So greed, people are feeling pretty good about the market. Yesterday, we hit around 69,000. And I thought we were going to see 70,000 yesterday. But for some reason, incrementally, we go to 67, hit 68, go back then to 67. A day later, hit 68. Think you're going to 69, go back down. So we're getting there by... Months in, I truly believe that we'll hit an all-new time, all-time high for uh, for Bitcoin, and that's going to be pretty exciting. And the market is showing that. You see here that people are pretty excited about things. So we'll see. Now, Bitcoin dominance at fifty-seven point six. That is high, man. And right now, I'll show you with these next slides that we're going to go over. A lot of institutional FOMO. They're buying retail. Really hasn't come in yet. They're starting to. There's some some signs of that with the meme coins, but. They're really not into it yet. And that's why I truly believe by the month's end, we will see a brand new high for Bitcoin. E-dominance, however, is continuing to go down 13.6. And I kind of talked about that earlier this week as to why that is. Obviously, liquidity is being sucked in with Bitcoin. But then ETH has so much more competition now with these L1s, not to mention the L2s that are kind of hurting it as well. Um, and so we'll see what happens with ETH. I think it could turn around, compete bull, but... We're definitely in greed currently. Um, at the time of the video, Bitcoin's at 68.2, ETH at 2,600, Sol's at 155, XRP had some good news there at 54 cents. Doge, look at this. This is what I wanted to show you. We'll talk about this a little later in the video. Past seven days, up 29.8%. And if you look at the volume of this thing, see that? That's crazy. That's higher than XRP. Um, even higher than Solana. So people are into Doge. So if you don't have some Doge, you may want to take a look and take a flinger, see what happens with that. That might be a decent play as far as the DGen play goes. Um, look at the volume of Doge, right, compared to something like Cardano. It's, it's crazy. Sheeb also. So right now, as far as memes go, Doge is taking all the thunder. But um, Avalanche is up. Um, it's at 28 bucks. So the past seven days is down 3%. Sheeb's up 6.5%. Chainlink's up 2.5. Current price, 11 bucks. Nier is down a little less than a, a, a percent, $4.83. And we got Sui at $2. Litecoin, 75 bucks, up 12%, 13%. What do you guys think, think about Litecoin? Um, you know, if you listen to influencers out there, you probably don't want to, want to deal with it. But for me, I'm like, you know what? If people are FOMOing into Bitcoin and it's considered digital gold and Litecoin, when it came out, was alleged to be, you know, like silver um, and it's a set supply. Could this be a decent play? I don't know. Um, I know that's Litecoin is one of those things. I don't know. It might be good to hold a little bit of it. Aptos, nine bucks, up five point eight percent. Pepe is, is one that's on the ETH ecosystem that I think is going to do very well. Pepe is a decent meme, um, and that's up only 4%, and so be it. And there you go. If we go down a little bit, let's take a look at Render. Render's up, was down 4.5%. Whiff's down 4.5%. And uh, Injective is up 5%, 21 bucks. Phantom is down, or is up 2.7%. Bonk is one that I like, it's up 6%, a Solana meme coin. Say is down almost 8%. So the alts right now are weak, and right now Bitcoin's taking all the all the thunder, but this is the time, this is the time, guys, where you wanna start 
loading up on your favorite ones because after Bitcoin runs, historically, we know the alts will run. So right now at these cheap prices, you should probably take advantage. So what is going on with Bitcoin? So Bank of America, big bank here in the U.S., says that with economic uncertainty in the future, that investors should be looking to hold gold as a safe haven to protect your wealth. Now, this is what they're saying, and, and I get it. You know, older heads, baby boomers, they trust gold. They were taught growing up that gold is safe. It's been around for ages. It's a safe asset to hold. And I bring this up because they got one part of this correct. You know, that the, the national debt is out of control and it's only going to get higher. And you do need a safe asset. You need something that's hard, that you can't mass produce, set in stone, gaining adoption, and it will only increase in adoption over the years to come. Not to mention, you know, you don't have to hold this, not wait. You know, you're carrying bars of gold. If something were to happen in the world and you're trying to save yourself, you need something that's transportable, that you can transact with electronically, very easy to use. So this article, I agree with it 50%, but I think it should say Bitcoin. And if we look at Bank of America and their holdings, um, you know, and the CEOs and the top execs there, I'm pretty sure they're involved in Bitcoin or they're holding some of the Bitcoin spot ETF. So again, this is what they tell the masses, go ahead, buy gold, buy gold, buy gold. But then the back end, they're probably buying Bitcoin. And once they stack up and everything is, is you know, they have enough, then you'll see other articles. Hey, maybe you should buy Bitcoin. Um, but this article is interesting. So it led me down a rabbit hole of taking a look at other things. So according to IMF, they believe that the global debt will shatter $100 trillion this year as governments prepare to increase spending. When that happens, just whatever fiat that you're currently holding, that you're saving in your bank, the purchasing power is just going to diminish almost to nothing. And that's scary. That's a scary thing to think about. So, you know, it's something that it's not only a U.S. problem, it's all over the world. And it's so much so that it's a big problem that the U.N., United Nations, called for urgent reforms right down here to the international financial system to address concerns over surging public debt, which is referred to as a growing burden on global prosperity. So what weapons do we have when you see it, you know the money is going to be spent on whether it's conflicts all over the world, hidden whatever agendas they have, social programs within the countries, they just keep spending. And I mean, we have no gold standard here in the U.S. like we did back in the 70s. Now the money's not backed by anything. We don't have a debt ceiling. So it was just printing, printing, printing. Imagine having a credit card with no, with no limit. You just have a bill that comes on every month and hey, you just keep spending, keep spending. And that's what's happening. It's just going to hurt the fiat. That's why I think Bitcoin is a very, very safe haven for people like you and me who, you know, we're not millionaires. We weren't born millionaires, but you need something to protect your future, your family's future, your legacy. And I think Bitcoin is it. But looking at the U.S. debt clock, just look at this. That is the U.S. national debt. And I'm showing this because this is where I live and it's just growing and it just grows out of control. That's uh, that's pretty crazy, right? And then look at this. This is by Charlie Baio. National debt, U.S. national debt, since we got rid of the debt ceiling. So basically think of it as a credit card with no credit limit. From June 2nd, 2023 to October 8th, 2024, we have gone from that number, 31 trillion, to 35.7 trillion. That's in a little over a year. And that's what's happening. So just imagine another year, another two years, where's that number going to be? And what is going to happen to the purchasing power of the fiat or the dollar that we hold? So if we look at top assets by market cap, Bank of America wants you to hold gold. And it is the number one current uh, asset based on market cap, uh, 18.1 But look at Bitcoin, which has not been, it hasn't been out for a long time, but it's currently at number 10 at 1.3 trillion. We know spot ETFs got approved earlier this year. Gold had spot ETFs for a while now. Gold's been around forever. For such a new asset to already be in the top 10, and things I'm going to show you later on in this video will support that it's just going to surge and go up even higher. 
it's a good asset to hold. And people are starting to wake up, not just everyday people like you and me, but smart people are starting to wake up and understand the value of this asset and where it's going. Uh, but others are Apple, Nvidia, Microsoft, um, Google, Amazon, Silver, Saudi, I'm guessing that's oil. And then you got Meta, Facebook, and then you have Bitcoin. So let's see there. Now let's look at for the past week, where was smart money investing? And if we look at here flows by asset, this is per US millions. We have Bitcoin inflow ending last week of 418 million. ETH had an outflow of 9.8 million. Then you have Solana had an inflow of 600,000. Binance was flat. Litecoin, 100,000. There's something, there might be something to this Litecoin thing. XRP had 1.1 million inflow. ADA was flat. Tron, 200,000. And that was it. So Bitcoin was the leader. Again, Bitcoin dominance, institutional FOMO. It's going to be great. Now let's take a look at. U.S. Bitcoin ETFs purchases for this week so far. So just look at these numbers. There's only 450 Bitcoin mined each day. This is what was purchased with the spot ETFs this week alone. Look at that. 8,300, 5,700, 6,500, 7,000, 4,000. Things are going to get crazy, guys. BlackRock spot ETF draws in over 1 billion so far this week. One billion dollars of Bitcoin purchases in a week alone. So we already talked about how much is produced per day. At some point, it's going to be a situation where they can't purchase via OTC anymore and they have to go to the spot like Coinbase and um, Gemini, Binance to purchase the Bitcoin. And when that happens, the price is just going to go boom. And when that happens, you start seeing news articles talk about Bitcoin and saying, wow, Bitcoin's at 150. Bitcoin's at 200,000. What do you think your uncle, your grandfather, and everyone's going to talk about at the dinner table? When they start asking about it, that's when it's going to go even higher. People do not like to miss out on things. And if they see something more at 70,000, at 100,000, hey, it might go to 200. Let me get in now. And then that's when things are going to go crazy. But remember, you and I were in this thing when it was way lower than that. So Bitcoin currently at the price of 68, 70,000. I still think it's a good DCA price, just a little bit. Uh, MicroStrategy is a good play as well. If you, you know, want to have one share or something, MicroStrategy is not a bad play. Um, now, let's take a look at number of Bitcoin held by nation states. You see, the U.S. has about 203,000, which was seized. China has 190,000. U.K., 61,000. Ukraine, 46,000. Uh, Bhutan, we talked about how they're starting to incorporate the Bitcoin strategy, 13,000. El Salvador, we know they have the Bitcoin strategy as well. They have 5,900 and then the like and like. Germany had some and sold it. But eventually, like we talked about, how FOMO is going to kick in. Light bulb will go off with these guys. They'll see global liquidity, debt, all that's going out of control. At some point, everyone's going to adopt the Bitcoin strategy. Then you're just going to have an arms race as to who's going to accumulate the most. Now, let's look at some altcoins. So altcoin season is definitely not here, but for the past 90 days, SUI has had a good run. They're up about 143%. Um, I think WBT is the world coin thing. I'm not into that. Um, Phantom is up 33.6%. We like Phantom here on this channel. Aptos, I talked about earlier this week, up 30%. And you have Say, we talked about on this channel, is up 13%. And you know, you have some Sheep, Doge, um, and Litecoin obviously is doing okay. But all these here to the right of this chart still have some room to grow. AVAX is down 14%. I like that project. Pepe, we talked about. I like it. Soul is down 16 You have ADA. So moral of the story is there's still room to, to stack the bags before next year. And right now, there are a lot of good projects that are at discount. Let Bitcoin have its run. After that, they will have their run. So that's what's going on there. Now, let's take a look at... TVL on these L1 chains. ETH is still number one at 48 billion total value lock. Solana has 5.9 billion. Then you have Vase at 2.4 billion. Um, Sui is at 1 billion. Avalanche, 1 billion. Uh, look at that. Polygon L2 on ETH at a billion. Aptos, 723 million. So they're coming up. Uh, let's see here. Tuncoin is at 400 million. 
Let's go down. Near is at 239 million. And then you have Ada, 226. Say 177 million. So the L1s are, you know, again, they're doing their thing. But yeah, I guess you want to focus on the ones that are coming up. ICP is at 47 million. Hedera, 48 million. So not ghost chain. Still some activity going on on these. Let's take a look at DEX volume. And we see the top DEX is still obviously with ethereum being top is tvls uniswap is going to be the top dex but look at radium radium's coming up so for the past week you see radium has an increase of 65 percent increase of 65 percent number two and you see the volumes at 969 million versus uniswap of 1.4 billion i've said this before and i'm gonna to continue to say it i think soul will surpass eth and it's only a matter of time but just, just look at that, 65.1 versus 16.2. And I think what's going to drive this is, is the meme activity. It's so cheap to transact on Solana, create your meme, do all of that. That's going to be one of the driving factors with altcoin season for sure. Uh, then you have Pancake Swap for BSV, Eurodrome, Orca is also on Solana. You see that, 290. So watch out. So now let's look at these memes as far as the top memes on ETH. Pepe, Floki, Sheeb, and Nero. And Pepe, I think, is the top one, obviously. Um, it's my favorite on the ETH ecosystem. And you just see here, as of yesterday, holders of Pepe, 277,000. So Pepe is definitely not a rug pull. It's been around, and I think it could be the Sheeb of this season. So next year, Pepe, can, can it do another Sheeb? Sheeb got over 20 million in market cap. Can that happen with Pepe? Quite possible. Floki is a big one. A lot of people like Floki. They're holding it as well. Um, but you see here, if you look at this chart, Floki's going down. People aren't holding it as much anymore. Um, Sheeb, let's take a look at that one. Sheeb is looking like it's flat. So Sheeb's pretty flat there. Um, then we have Nero. I don't know much about Nero. I really heard about it. But you look here, it's pretty flat as well. But people are holding it. It's about 11,000. Um, now let's take a look at um, WIF. WIF, look at that trajectory going up. How many holders are WIF? About 188. So that's a good hold in my opinion. I think they're gonna do well. Good community on Solana. Then if we look at Bonk, 188, good hold. Popcat is one that's not going away. It's pretty popular as well. And that currently is at 188. So over 150 holders for all of these coins. So with Bonk, Popcat, and if we go back to the ETH one, Pepe is the one that I'm interested in. And obviously Sheep, because they have big holders, but I like Pepe as the new kid on the block. Now, Doge. Doge is currently up. Let's go back to the chart here. 30% for the past seven days. When all these other alts are going down, you know, look at Doge. Doge is up 30.4% 30, 30 for the past seven days. And for the past 24 hours, is up 7.3%. Why is that? This could be the reason. This guy we know for the past bull cycle, he was all about Doge. He even allowed you to purchase some Tesla merchandise with Doge. I know Mark Cuban, when he was with the Dallas Mavericks, also had that as well. So there is some adoption and Doge has a crazy community. They still have a community. If you need a meme to pump and have some promise, it has to have community and Doge is one of the ones with the biggest one. But he has a Department of Government Efficiency and if it's an acronym for Doge. And if you go all over crypto Twitter or X Twitter, you'll see this. And obviously we have a US election going on right now and that's one of the big drivers. I mean, cause there's no other news. I haven't seen anything else other than this. Elon is like the de facto Doge spokesman. And right now he's pretty popular. He's all over X and this is what he's talking about. So that's the reason that I think Doge is going up. So lastly, I'll leave you with this. Let's take a look at the token unlocks for the week. And we see that ADA had a small unlock. You know, they're, they're pretty good as far as inflation goes. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. About 6.5 million. Um, now we look at Celestia. Celestia has a small unlock of, look at that, not small, huge unlock. 1.5 billion holy moly then we got sui they have an unlock of 132 million and let's go down here you have aptos they have an unlock 
109. Arbitrum has an unlock of 52 mil. Then we go down. ApeCoin has just been unloading. Every time I look at this chart, ApeCoin is, is flooding. AVAX has an unlock of 46 million. Ondo has an unlock of 1.5 billion. Ooh, that's heavy. Um, and that's it. And look at what. Well, let's go back to unlock. And then if you look at Ondo, which I thought was a decent project, look at the total unlock so far. Only 14%. And this is how much they're unlocking now. That's 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 a big red flag for me. So in closing, we had a good week in Bitcoin and Bitcoin. Is just, I think the, the news is just going to get better as the year goes on and we get closer to the election. After the election, we're going to see some sky high numbers from Bitcoin. And I want you to go back and look at this video. Remember, I don't want to say I told you so, but, you know, if you look at the charts on chain metrics and everything, it just shows that we're going to skyrocket. And I think it's definitely an asset to hold and just, you know, prepare for the future because the way governments are spending money all around the world, purchasing power is just going down and you just need something to safeguard you, your family and your future. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoy your weekend. And if you like it, please hit that like button until next time.